Hey friends, it's Becky back with Bountifully Blessed. I hope that you guys are having a wonderful day. Um, I have had a very productive day, a very interesting day. Um, we have had no hot water, so I've been having to boil <laughs> a lot of hot water. Uh, life has happened to us, and so we've had quite the adventure doing dishes with hot water that I had to boil on the stove, and um, all that good stuff. So, I uh, have a couple of really fun projects that we are going to do, so I'm actually really excited to have you guys with me today. Um, we are going to be working on dinner tonight, which is just going to be something very simple, um, and I've got a couple of fun projects that I really want to do. One of them is making eggnog. Um, I've never made eggnog before, but I thought it would be really fun to give a try, especially since we are in the holiday season. We've got Thanksgiving coming up and Christmas, and I would like to be able to to hopefully perfect it now <laughs> rather than it turn out really really bad later so we're gonna have some fun with that I've got dinner going tonight um, we're just gonna do something really simple I'm just gonna do some spaghetti nothing crazy um, I've got my own little twists that I like to add on to that but other than that it's pretty basic so we're gonna have some fun all right well, let's get our goodies ready to go here so Just keeping things very simple today. Just gonna sit here and enjoy a cup of tea. This lovely mug from my best friend it says fur mama on it kind of a big fan I love the shape of it too it just makes my heart happy so we have two fur babies um, two dogs and they are our babies so we're gonna enjoy some cinnamon hibiscus tea while we get dinner going so we're just gonna start our Stove, obviously with some water and then I'm gonna get this one preheating we're gonna add just a little bit of oil and I'm gonna actually start to um, sweat out some onions so just put a little bit of oil in the pan nothing crazy nice little splash and I've got some goodies here I am finally gonna be able to make some of my own spaghetti sauce, which I'm very excited for. Um, and so even though I haven't been able to get to that project yet, we will soon, I promise. So um, I'm very excited because I won't have to continue relying on something that's already pre-made. So I'm just gonna, I just have a basic onion here and I actually need it for my recipe tomorrow as well. So I figured, you know what, let's kill two birds with one stone, right? And let's get it ready to go. So we're going to peel this and I'm just going to dice it. Um, I'm trying to decide, do I want to dice it for tomorrow? I'll probably dice it for tomorrow's meal as well. Um, so tonight I'm just doing some very simple um, spaghetti, nothing fancy. Um, you know, just kind of at that bare minimum where we're just kind of trying to get through the final stretch of things. <laughs> so we are making everything work that we have. And honestly, I feel like I've gotten pretty creative. So kudos to that, right? And I am not going to waste any of the onion here. So um, I've got the edges here with the um, actual roots that would normally come out of there so I'm going to I've got my handy dandy little bag here that I keep all of my scraps I've got the start to a new set of scraps because I just made some chicken stock and then I've also got my onion skins here these will leave a lot of really good 
um, color to your broths or your stock. So in those go since I just started those. And we'll be bringing those out again too because we'll be prepping just some carrots and some celery too. So we're gonna keep it very simple. So since we are starting off with dinner tonight, I'm just going to dice half of the onion that I have here. And then I am making southern goulash for lunch tomorrow. Um, I usually throw some easy things in the crock pot if I can <laughs> um, for Sundays. Um, Sundays are usually a pretty busy day for us. We're usually in church most of the day. So it's just really convenient to have um, none of the other concerns of having to cook and worry about all of the things. And right now, since I'm having to boil water to clean dishes, the least amount of dishes I can have, the better. Because I have been doing a lot of baking lately and <laughs> getting myself in trouble because I have every single one of my uh, mixing bowls just completely dirty. So that's been a hot mess. That was so hard trying to clean all that like that. Uh, but I made it work. I made it work. It was interesting, but we made it work. Okay. So since obviously dinner is the priority right now, we are just going to get our beautifully chopped onions here. those are going to go in the pan. I'm going to put those and get them nice and sweated. I usually kind of get them to where they're not quite caramelized, but they are. So nothing crazy. Okay, so now that we've got that going, I'm actually going to prep a couple of things since I've already got them um, for my southern goulash tomorrow. So my onions, I am going to chop my onion um, for that, and I'm just going to get all of those veggies prepped in a little jar here while we keep an eye on our onions. So let's see. Um, I don't want them thin, but I also don't want them too thick. So we are going to, yeah, we'll, we'll do like a rough chop with these guys. We'll do a, an easy, easy rough chop here. diced, but I do want them to be more cubed. I think that's about it. Sometimes I feel like I cube them one way and then I cube them the wrong way. So I just want to make sure that they're not too, <laughs> uh, too unusual. All right. This will be fun. So um, we are going to prep our carrots and celery. Um, usually um, you can put some red bell peppers in this. Um, my husband's not really a big fan of red peppers, so I will not usually put those in for his sake, but nothing crazy. So got some chop-ish onions. I feel like some of those are a little bit bigger than I would like though. 
It's funny, I know there's a right way to do it and I swear I do it wrong every time. <laughs> and oh my heavens, if you've never caramelized onions before you are really missing out because, oh, they smell so heavenly. Okay, I think I got the longer pieces out that were kind of long and stringy. Those will work. Another little piece for our bag here. Might as well keep this out because we'll have some stuff from our carrots and our celery. So, we're gonna just grab a couple carrots out here. And get these guys prepped. And the nice thing is, again, this just goes right in with our scraps. Oops, I grabbed mine. <laughs> that is not going to do what I wanted to do. There we go. So we'll get these peeled. Beautiful. times get that out of the way beautiful nothing too crazy and then these also will go in our bag of our scraps for saving for our next batch of stock which I usually actually um, since we're coming around Christmas time now I can just save those turkey bones and honestly it tastes just like chicken stock to us so there's a lot of bones. Last year, I think we just barely finished that just from one turkey. So, take advantage of that, no doubt. Beautiful. All right, let's just check on our onions here. Although it might help if I have my spatula. I'm just getting a nice golden brown color. And since I added oil to them first, I still don't need to add a little bit of water until they're completely dried out, but they're looking super good and they're going to smell heavenly. So now you're doing something right. <laughs> All right, let's get these carrots chopped up. baby ones I usually put in with my stock if I don't feel like eating them because they're going to end up cooking way faster. So we'll get those carrots in there. Beautiful. Now our celery. I can't wait until I have a space to where I can just do all things myself and not have to rely on a store for like basic things like this but I will be content with where I'm at in life. And I do love the space that I have. Honestly, I'm surprised I've been able to make it as good as I have. <laughs> Sometimes I'm, I really surprise myself, so. All right, we'll peel off all these little extra pieces here that we're not gonna use in our goulash. And those are going to go in our bag, those little iffy spots. Perfect. Cut those also about the same way I did my carrots. There's always one that's so much bigger. There we go. I felt like I cut those pretty big, but 
Never know 100%, right? All right, so now I've got those ready to go. So that's my onions, celery, and my carrots. I've got my roast here. Um, I ran out of food saver bags recently. So this is what I've got. I'm just gonna let that out a little bit and let it defrost just a little bit. It's gonna go in the crock pot, so it's not a big deal. All right. Okay, easy enough there. I don't have anything else to prep for tomorrow's dinner except for, of course, adding the seasonings. Just check on those onions. And now I feel good to add a little bit of oil, or sorry, a little bit of water. And we're gonna let those help cook. This is how we're gonna get those nice and caramelized. And I like to do that. I don't like to fully caramelize them, but I basically will do this step for my pasta usually. Um, my husband decided to call it white girl sauce because I add white cooking line to the onions. <laughs> it was hilarious. He's like, babe, this is so good. What should we call it? And I'm like, I don't know. And so he called it white girl sauce. So we have officially dubbed it white girl sauce. It's quite hilarious. So usually what I do um, when I'm making pasta is because it's just the two of us, we usually have a lot of leftovers. Um, and so sometimes I will make something that's only gonna be good for uh, that night. But when it comes to things like this, I can just make one big batch and then We'll have pasta sauce left over usually. And then I can decide what to do from there. So, all right. I'm very excited to make some eggnog. I've never made eggnog and I have a really cool recipe for it. So I'm excited to try it. I have no idea how it's gonna turn out though. It's probably gonna end up tasting really terrible just cause I mentioned it. It's always how it goes. Not really, but all right. While we let that do its thing, let's start on our eggnog. Okay. Put this back in the freezer. Okay, and the recipe I have for it, um, I've got these really cute cooking books. Um, I got these from Dollar Tree. Yes, Dollar Tree. I actually have a ton of cookbooks that I have from Dollar Tree that are like, amazing. So I've got this fabulous little recipe in here for eggnog. So I'm just going to follow this and we'll go from there. A little nervous. I've never done this before. Okay. So it calls for six egg yolks. Okay. Egg yolks. I was not expecting that. I can't wait until I have chickens. I want chicken so bad. One day I will have chickens. One day. Until that day, I will continue getting my eggs from the store. Unfortunately. All right, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Although we really like the brown eggs, so those taste so much better. There we go. doing this wrong? I was doing it wrong. There you go. Okay. So six egg yolks. And I need to mix it with the mixer. All right. While I have got those onions going, behind us. Um, those are starting to look really good. So we're just going to grab a couple of things from our pantry. I'm going to get some um, white cooking wine and our noodles.
just to add some variety, I have some linguine noodles, so we'll use those tonight. We also have tons of different kinds of um, pasta noodles. It's actually quite fun. So now that my onions are this beautiful golden color, um, I am ready to add in my red cooking oil. And that just gives it a lot of really good flavor. All right. So now that those are good and kind of starting to caramelize with that um, white cooking wine. Um, we are going to officially start on our eggnog. So let's see how this goes. Get you set up. Okay, friends. So I am now going to add our sauce into our delicious onions. So I'm going to add all of that. And I did about half an onion in there. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit here. And then I have got all kinds of yummy herbs that I like to add to this. So I actually just went over to my corner garden and I got some fresh basil here. So I'm going to pick that off here. never have too much basil. It's like garlic. It's like a necessity. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get bigger leaves into smaller leaves. Like I taught you guys before. And then you're just going to roll them up. And chop, chop. Or slice, slice, rather. <laughs> So I'll add that to our pasta sauce here. I'll let that cook. Beautiful. All right, and I've got some freshly minced garlic that we're gonna use as well. I usually use some garlic that I just did, but I've got some here in oil. I'm just going to add, make my life a little bit easier. Beautiful. And then I've just got a variety of different things that I like to add. I'm going to add some oregano, um, some thyme, Italian seasoning. Just really depends on what I'm in the mood for. But those are kind of some standards. Some nice dried herbs is always a nice thing to have. I rarely ever gauge anything off of measurements. I usually just do it based off of preference. And we're gonna let this cook down just a little bit. And where did I put my, oh, put it right here. Just gonna add a little bit more white cooking wine and that's gonna actually flavor the rest of the sauce there. As it cooks down, it's going to really cook into that flavor, and it'll be delicious. And that's really it for dinner. It's going to be pretty simple. So, we'll let this do its magic, and now we can officially do our eggnog. Okay, so we need six egg yolks for our eggnog. So, I'm going to separate these. This has always been the easiest, least complicated way to do it, in my opinion. You just do the back and forth thing. Although, I need to make sure that I'm putting the egg yolks in here and not the egg whites. So, let me 
get a thing for the egg whites to be put in. So that way I don't get myself in trouble. That is a really tiny bowl. That is not what I thought I grabbed. I had one in there, but I have other white dishes too, so. All right. I'm just continuing to check on my sauce back here. I did decide to add some, um, I had some already cooked uh, sausage, so I just added that to it, so it'll get nice and heated up in there, and then we'll be good to go, so. I'm going to get all of these eggs in here. Okay, so now I am supposed to take our egg yolks. I've got six egg yolks and gradually put in half a cup of sugar and mix well. Zoop. And then I'm supposed to beat with an electric mixer. Okay. So I've got that and then beat at high speed with an electric mixer. Okay. Clean off my dough is here. high speed and then set aside so I'm assuming that that's what we want and then we are supposed to heat up some milk friends so I already served up dinner which was so good definitely a favorite so I'm over here enjoying it my husband's in there enjoying it I added some bratwurst that I already had cooked and oh it's so good I've had to learn how to eat a little bit slower for my sake, so. Okay, let's get this um, eggnog taken care of. So I'm supposed to add two cups of milk and we are gonna warm that and then we're gonna add our seasonings, which is always so exciting. It's such a fun, exciting process. All right, two cups. I have this measuring cup, but oh, there it is. But the lines, because it's plastic, are no longer showing. So, two cups of milk, and we are going to heat that. You can never go wrong with milk. All right. So we're going to heat that. Okay, so we don't want the milk to come to a boil. We just want it heated. That's apparently really important. Okay, so then we'll add cinnamon, nutmeg, and salt, and then continue to heat. Oh, that 
that's heating. Let me just get my cute little spice jar here. Okay, so I need a teaspoon of cinnamon. have here to freshly grade because um, it's delicious so why not all right let's see if we can do this in this little thing I think we'll do all right and we want half oops I'm gonna fill this one halfway <laughs> uh, only downside with doing it fresh is sometimes it's a little bit messier It'll be worth it, I promise. Plus, nutmeg fresh not only tastes amazing and smells heavenly when you actually grate it, but honestly, it looks so cool. Man, I'm making a mess, but it looks like a little tree. Like, you see how cool that looks on the inside? Oh, it's just so neat to me. All right. Now that I've made a gigantic mess all over my stove top that I just cleaned. <laughs> That's part of the, the cooking process, is it not? All right. Well, I'm just going to do it over top of my bowl here. Give it a little bit of extra love. I know it wasn't quite half of a teaspoon, so give it a little extra. Why not? like it's gonna hurt anyone's feelings. Beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna fill my milk. It's not quite heated, at least not in my thought process. And I just can rinse this off and put it away. So nice. Okay, so we've got our seasonings there and then a pinch of salt is all we need. So I'll just add a little bit of salt. Boop, boop, boop. And then we will add that to it. And then let it do its thing for about five minutes. Very interesting process here. So I'm gonna put my saucepan up just a little bit, not too much. Enjoy my tea while we're waiting for eggnog. <laughs> okay. So it's got a little bit of warmth to it. Okay, and I'm supposed to let this do its thing for about five minutes. So I'm going to just set a timer. It looks weird because, of course, it's not hot. So it just looks like you know hot cocoa when your water or your milk isn't warm yet or warm enough yet for it to actually like fully break down inside of it that's kind of what this looks like right now it looks weird but that's okay <laughs> We're going to continue heating for about five minutes, but not let it come to a boil. And then I'm going to whisk in hot milk into the eggs a little bit at a time. And then when all of it's whisked in, I'm supposed to pour the mixture back into the saucepan and cook on medium heat until it stirs, until it starts to thicken. But don't let it come to boil because it will curdle, which makes sense. That would be absolutely disgusting. Nobody wants curdled milk and eggs. Yuck. So, all right, I'm going to let this sit for a minute. And then once we come to the next step, I will 
allow us to do that. So we're going to keep an eye on this, make sure it's not going to boil. And then we are going to continue working on our stew for tomorrow. So we have got the um, seasoned milk <laughs> on the stove behind us. And we're letting that do what it needs to do. And while that's continuing to do its thing, I am going to finish getting our goulash ready for tomorrow. Add the rest of the seasonings and all that good jazz. All right. Okay. My eggs only look a little weird. Ooh. I just felt like they should be mixed. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they do, but okay. I'll let that sit aside here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Inside my sugar here that we used for the eggnog. All right. All my cables. Okay. So I'm gonna add all the seasonings, and then once I put it all in the crock pot, we'll throw in. I've got like diced tomatoes that go in it, um, liquid things. So I'm not going to worry too much about that right this minute. But for now, we'll at least do the main seasonings. So, oh, I forgot I needed a little bit of sugar. So I need one tablespoon of sugar. Keep an eye on our hot milk. <laughs> okay. One tablespoon of sugar. <laughs> The things we do for attention. Just teasing. All right, one tablespoon of sugar. Um, we're gonna do one tablespoon of Italian seasoning. One teaspoon of Cajun seasoning. Where did I put my Cajun seasoning? Oh, there it is. Like I know I have it. I was looking at Old Bay. I'm like, oh, um, that's not right. One teaspoon of Cajun seasoning. We're going to do some paprika, which actually I'm going to do my homemade paprika because it's so delicious. And it's beautiful and orange. Beautiful, beautiful. And let's see, half a teaspoon of paprika. And this stuff is potent. Okay. Let's check on our milk real quick. Okay. So now we are supposed to gradually whip that so let's set our meat aside for just a minute and we'll get our eggs this is such a weird thing to do and I'm supposed to gradually whip this in here and then return it to the saucepan sounds so weird I will do what needs to happen for eggnog okay I mean, who in the world thought to add milk and eggs together with seasonings and was like, yep, that's a good idea. Like, seriously. <laughs> but if it's good, it's good. So I ain't mad at it. It 
don't know what's stuck on the bottom of this, but it looks like seasonings. So I'm just cleaning that up. Okay. No, it looks and smells good. So I mean, I can't really say much about it. And then we're gonna return that to our saucepan. I wanna make sure I get all those eggs because I think that's important. I'm just gonna scrape the sides here. Oops, okay. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, okay, so I'm supposed to return it to the heat and basically let it thicken. Right now it has a very unique smell, but I cannot pinpoint it. Very interesting. Okay, so while we're continuing to watch that, let's get back to our seasonings here. So we just finished adding some paprika. Um, we're gonna add some bay leaves. Um, those will just go with the actual um, while it's cooking, obviously, but I'll just add those for now um, in there so that way I have them. And then let's do some red pepper flakes. I'm not going to add a crazy amount of these because I'm a wimp, but about a fourth of a teaspoon of those. And then some minced garlic, about two cloves. I already have my garlic here, so I'm just gonna eye it. This is some pre-minced garlic. It is so nice, you just, it looks kind of like a jelly. I just preserve it in some oil. And if I leave this at room temperature for just a couple minutes, it actually completely breaks apart, but it's so amazing. This is some of the music garlic I had set aside. So, got it. Got to go with the garlic. And then we've got one and a half tablespoons of Worcestershire because, um, hello, it's Worcestershire. Beautiful. And I need some diced tomatoes. And that should do it. Pour some salt and pepper. Oh, hold on. Seasoned salt. Not something I keep very handy. Um, one teaspoon of seasoned salt. use it super often but it's nice to have okay I'll try and clean up as best as I can as I go there we go okay so now the only thing this needs is the diced tomatoes and um, I am going to sear the outside of my meat I just have it sitting here for now and then we will stick it in our crock pot for a delicious lunch tomorrow. Okay, so we're just keeping an eye on our eggnog here. It's said to keep it on medium heat until it thickened, but I was starting to get nervous because it was kind of like boiling. And that's a huge thing not to let it boil. So I turned the temperature down and now I'm just giving it a little extra love and attention. With stirring, I could definitely feel it getting thicker. I don't know how to describe the smell. It smells kind of like hot chocolate, but it doesn't. So let's make sure I'm not missing anything, okay? And then I stir in the cream afterwards. 
Oh, where did I? Oh, you're supposed to serve in the vanilla afterwards. Interesting, okay. I was thinking you added the cinnamon, or I'm sorry, the uh, vanilla beforehand, but it says before serving, you put in the vanilla. Interesting. I wonder why. So I can definitely feel it getting thicker. I think it looks a little thicker too. And then I'm just supposed to remove from the heat and then refrigerate to chill. Or, um, I add the heavy cream. I have a cup of heavy cream I'm supposed to add to it. And then I chill it. cream. Right before I put it in the fridge to chill for about an hour, it says. All right. It's always nerve wracking when you make stuff like this. Like again, who thought that Let's, let's add some spices and some milk and yeah, let's do some eggs and then let's, let's boil it and make it creamy and like, so many things wrong with this. <laughs> uh, okay, it's definitely thickening up. I just don't know how thick it's supposed to get. It just says... I'm guessing it's not supposed to be thick, it's just meant to be thickened, maybe? I turned up the heat just a little bit, because it says on medium heat, so I'm guessing it's supposed to be on medium heat. about this. I'm hoping that I didn't make it curdle. Dang it. I think that's what that is. Is that little bit of time it heated up just enough to curdle just a little bit, but I don't know. It didn't look like that before. You know. Okay, I'm assuming that because it's technically thickened now that that's what it was looking for. So I'm supposed to remove it from the heat. Oh yeah, I think it's curdled. I think that's what that is. There's no way that's what it's supposed to look like, you think? Mm. I don't know, guys. That's a little nerve-wracking to me. Let me look. Hey friends, so I did a little bit of Googling <laughs> um, to see if there's any way I could fix that problem with the curdling, um, it, which is very, very subtle. And so apparently it's actually super, super easy to fix, especially if it's very minor. Lots of good little tips and tricks, but um, stirring vigorously and adding a little bit of extra milk helps break them up, especially if it's small. So that's what I did. I just added another splash of milk. And I'm just giving it a lot of good, good arm muscle here. And it's definitely doing the trick. It even looks better. And it actually tastes really, really good too. It tastes like the holiday season. Apparently you can add some rice to kind of help break up any curdling. You can 
um, strain it through like a cheesecloth kind of thing. Um, yeah, lots of little tips and tricks, but since mine were small, I wanted something that was going to be hopefully not as bad. So let's see how my spatula, oh yeah, there we go, look at that. Whew, just a little bit of, a little bit of arm muscle. We got this, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I'm very proud of that. Took a lot of arm muscles, but we have success. Okay, now I can add my cream. And I'm debating how I wanna store this in my fridge. Do I have a big enough glass? I don't particularly wanna keep it in the pan. That will be a little weird. All right, I'm just gonna pour in one cup of cream, heavy cream. I'm really excited for this, guys. I thought for sure that I ruined it, but tips and tricks, tips and tricks. I'm all about those tricks any hack that I can use, <laughs> I will take advantage of if I can. All right, let's see, do I have a big enough? I'm trying to think if I have a big enough container to put this in. Mm, that might work. Let's see, I've got this blender bottle. <laughs> it's not like a ton, so I don't wanna like overkill, but. Oh yeah, that's nice and smooth. Oh, that fits almost all of it perfectly. Okay, now it says to chill for an hour. So we're gonna stick this in the fridge and check on it in an hour. So excited, guys. We'll be all right, friends, while we are waiting for our eggnog to chill, we are gonna sear the outside of our roast for our goulash tomorrow. So I'm gonna put my temp here on my pan to about medium to medium high because we want to get that really beautiful gorgeous coloring on the sides for flavor. Lock in all of that yumminess. And this was just the remainder of my garlic oil that we made. If you haven't seen that video, please go watch it. And I'm just gonna let this heat up before I get my roast over here. Since it's just me and my husband, we do things pretty uh, low key as far as, you know, how much we're doing and all that. So usually um, I would, you know, cut this and dice and everything like that. But honestly, I'm gonna let the crock pot do its thing. It's gonna break it apart and make it so good. So this is just kind of a, a pre-cooker <laughs> instead of a precursor. Get it? That was a terrible joke. <laughs> All right. It's getting nice and warm. Let's grab our roast here. We've got all of our seasonings here and here except for our tomatoes. So I'm just going to season all the good stuff. All right. That beautiful roast. And I did take it out of the freezer, so it is probably going to take a minute. What I started to do because I won't start this until tomorrow. Um, I'll get up nice and early tomorrow morning. So what I'm gonna do is just basically let all of this marinate and be one big happy, beautiful family. And it'll flavor everything really nicely. So that'll be so delicious. 
It is definitely a favorite meal. Usually I would add some tomato sauce to this, but I don't have any and it's not the end of the world, so I'm okay without it. and roasty toasty. Don't roasty toasty my arms, please. so that when I put things in the crock pot they don't come out mushy because we want them just a little bit crispy. But I still feel like I made those a little bigger than I realized. That's okay. Oh my heavens, this spaghetti. I think, honestly, I think it was the minced garlic that I had set aside because I can taste that so much more than I normally can. And the best way possible. that beautiful browning all the way around it. Yeah. So now this is going to sit in all of this goodness. You know what? I'm going to actually mix this around. Get all those flavors in there. So that way when it's soaking throughout the night, all those flavors are already locked in. You could add a broth or a stock if you wanted to this. I might add a beef stock. I do have mine. I have it in the past. Um, I usually just do this and then plenty, but the juices and stuff from the tomatoes are usually completely sufficient, but we'll see when I decide to actually put it away in the crock pot. Alright, 
let this bad boy just soak in all this yumminess. I'm just going to kind of shove it in there a little bit. Yeah. Get all that goodness. Beautiful. That's going to make such a yummy, yummy lunch slash dinner tomorrow. I'm going to get this packaged. Um, wrapped, rather. Just put a little bit of aluminum foil over it. My plastic wrap has not been my friend, although I don't know if this is going to be either. It's always nerve-wracking. I'm going to... Just the little cutter part came off like a while ago, so I have to break it off and it's just a little bit more of a hassle, but it stays on there, so it's not as pretty when I rip it apart, but it'll work. So that's going to marinate all night in there. And then we will be back to check on our eggnog. I'm so excited. All right. Set that here. And we, we will come back and check on the eggnog when it's time. I still got like 50 minutes. So we'll see how it tastes. I'm really excited. Okay, friends. So I just tidied up my um, kitchen space um, while I let everything... Um, chill. I don't know why I'm struggling with words. So I actually decided to chill some of our mugs and I have my homemade vanilla here. So I'm just going to add a little splash in the bottom of this. A little bit of vanilla. And here's our eggnog. I decided to move it into another container and blend it a little bit because the blender bottle um, was a little thick and it was struggling to really chill it very well. And so I took it out, I blended it a little bit because the texture was still just not quite as creamy. And I decided to blend it and then I just kept it in here. So, and it has already been husband approved. I just went and took him a jar and he's like, make sure to add vanilla. <laughs> Nothing like homemade vanilla, I tell you what. All right. delicious cinnamon nutmeg and vanilla and then um, if you wanted to you could top it with some cinnamon I have some cinnamon sticks I put in here but it's already got a ton of cinnamon in it so I'm not too worried about that but pretty tasty not gonna lie I'm definitely gonna let it chill even longer but that is delicious I'm definitely gonna have some fun making that um, I'm hoping to have some cute little Christmas party, we'll see. And this will be a necessity. Homemade eggnog. Mm. Delicious. So, we had a lot of fun today. <laughs> At least I know I did. So, I got our dinner made tonight, which was a big success. Um, we made our southern goulash for lunch tomorrow. That'll get tossed in the crock pot first thing in the morning. So it'll be ready tomorrow afternoon after church. And we made some very successful eggnog. Took a little bit of messing with <laughs> for the texture's sake. But once we got that figured out, we got it. So, pretty exciting. Cheers. I pray that you're bountifully blessed. Until next time.